Hi, Irie. Hi, Judy and Ruby. I always like to ask if you can see everything okay, if you can hear me okay. Hi, Corey. Boy, Unique has been really busy, haven't they? Looking good. Awesome. We'll just wait a maybe a minute. I can see and hear you well. Awesome. And uh, then we'll get started. Everybody, um, I'm not sure if all, everybody on this live is doing the Ricky Palooza. Hi, Shelly. But uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I actually took some time off work next week. So I could really sit back and enjoy it all. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Okay, well maybe we'll get started. It is 2 o'clock, my time, 1 o'clock your time. I think I finally got a hang on of uh, the time zone stuff. You're looking forward to it too, Judy? That's great. So today is our March layout, our art journal layout. And uh, we already did our gel print from our session back in January. So that means this is the last month for our gel print prep for our months ahead. So in April, we'll have to have another gel press or gel print class and do April, May and June so that we'll get ready for those. So in the next probably couple of weeks or not even a couple of weeks because here we are at the 10th of March already, I will go through the color box and uh, pick out some palettes for those months. But this is what we, this is our color palette of choice. Um, it's like a very, very dark green, almost black. This is more of um, pine green, getting a little bit lighter. And this one here, uh, I did color matching the best I could to the Tim Holtz Distress inks because I have all their inks, so that's kind of my palette of choice. So I use tea dye, and I think tea dye is going to go very well with it, at least the oxide. So when you look at these two together, they look very similar. And I did pull out oxides and regular distress for tea dye, forest moss for this green, peeled paint for this one, and I have gathered tweaks for this brown. And this one I didn't pull any out, but I do have some black. And I also pulled out of my stash with art journal anything anything will go so i have the distress mica stain that's called fallen acorn that's the sparkly kind and i'm going to bang it here to release the ball because this one's brand new i haven't opened it yet well actually both of the ones that i chose set uh this one here is specimen which is a very dark green with mica and then this one here so i'll have to lay them on their side and get them shaken. Sorry for the banging, but let me get these balls rolling while we're jumping on here. Oh, and I really should have had these on their side. At least that's what Mr. Holtz says is the best. When before you use them, you just lay them on the side. That way it doesn't uh, take as long to mix them up so I'm gonna get them all ready just in case and uh, with this type of art there's nothing that's off the plate so to speak for what you want to use you can use anything you can use pattern paper you can use um, prints like we did all your inks and sprays and pen coloring pencils and I have some old distress stain 
before they started putting it in the spray bottle. I still have like, it's almost like the bingo dauber and that's forest moss. And I did pull, I guess this would be for this dark, dark brown, ground espresso. The newest colors, um, I believe is on its way to me from Unique. And that was Scorched Timber was that one. Okay. Is anybody playing along? Are you just watching? Are you new to art journaling and mixed media? Or is it something that you have experience in? I always like to hear what people's thoughts are around that. they package this stuff well anybody playing around today I also pulled um, the distressed pencils again I ordered the you're just watching Irene that's good just watching and doing other crafting awesome Corey so I pulled black soot and the picket fence for white. This is tattered rose that looked like closest to tea dye. Um, I have peel paint, vintage photo, and rustic wilderness. So I do have the other three sets of pencils on order, and those are coming in my box. So I have. I'm anticipating a really good box from Unique soon. I also pulled out some just um, washi tape from my stash. And as my post said, these colors for me, when I look out my window this time of the year, I can see our backyard is forest. So I can see the moss on the ground. I can see the brown of the trees and the green trying to peek through the snow so that's kind of where my theme is going I'm thinking mushrooms uh, really earthy stuff so keeping with that and I know uh, AALL and create is a new line that unique is starting to carry which I am so excited about and this is one that I had purchased a while back and it's mushrooms and mushrooms in a jar and then there's some other little stamps. I absolutely adore these stamp sets. So I pulled that out in case I want to do that. I have some stencils at the ready. Stamperia stencils and cinnabar today. So I have this one. I have some with just the alphabet numbers. I have this one from Finnebar. And I have another one that's kind of uh, postage and numbers from Finnebar. And then I have one from my stash, which I'm really, really not sure where it come from, but it's kind of just circles. So I thought we might do some of those bokeh kind of circles. Anyway, we'll see where it leads us to. But I like to limit the supplies that I'm using just so I can keep myself a little bit organized and I don't keep you here for 10 hours. So let's get at her. I pre-started the work because as you guys know, we have to kind of dry in between and that reminds me I've got to get my drying tool ready. And what I did, because this book that I'm using is kind of manila in color, I want it uh, to first just have it more white. So I put a layer of gesso down. And then what I did is I did my journaling. So if you watched our April session, I talked about um, doing your own journaling for whatever's happening in the month that we're doing. Whatever you're looking forward to, maybe it's something that happened and you kind of want to just forget about it. So you could do your own private journaling, kind of get it out of the way and then you can kind of cover up bits and pieces so that in the end 
maybe no words are showing at all, but you've had an opportunity to jot down your feelings and what's happening in your life for that month. And this journal is for you. So um, you can feel free. And that's another reason why I kind of prepped it ahead. I don't think you can read it all. But anyway, if you can, there's no secrets here. But uh, it's kind of my story for what's going on in this month. So then I erased some of the letters or words. And then I did another light layer of gesso. This is a tool that I highly recommend. And I'm going to see if uh, they're still available. They're made by Prima or Finnebar. And it's a um, silicone end it's solid it's not bristles but this is the most fantastic tool to use when you spread your gesso and i totally forgot all about it and uh, i just happened to look over to my little bin here today and i seen it and i thought i gotta show this because it is great it just spreads your gesso on really easy and you might get to see me use it here so we have uh, gesso some journaling, some more um, gesso. So I think we're going to get right into it. And I forgot to get some water. So you guys just hang tight here for a second. I have to run to the sink. Yes, I had to get some water for my brushes. So I'm just going to put this up here and pull out a couple of brushes, the ones that I normally use for um, putting down my matte, my multi-medium matte gel. But I'll get a couple out. Stick them in the water. And also a round brush. I like using a round brush if I'm going to do any splatters. Um, it does that really well. The other thing I have today is just a piece of acrylic. So this is actually, it's called shaker panels. But it's just a piece of plastic. And you can get that just out of a plastic wrap is fine. And it's just so that when I put my pellet down, if I want to dab, so I'm thinking I'm going to do some of that today. So let's see what kind of colors I want. This one's too white to start with, since we started with gesso. This one here is very textured because when we did the prints, I forget which, which uh, medium I used, but it's got some texture to it. I think it was the Finnebar, Finnebar line. So I'm just going to tear some strips. And I'm just taking the white edges off because I don't need those. Now you can cut squares, you can die cut if you're looking for a particular shape to put on your journal. But I think I'm just going to start with that much of that one. This one is just really too speckled for what I'm looking for. So I'm going to skip that for a minute. I might pull some of that in in the end. This one actually is too blue. It's got too much kind of blue hues. And I like these two. This one's kind of too minty green. And what I do after I'm done these journals with anything left over is I do have a spot in my craft room that I just store all gel prints that I've done. And that way when I'm ready or when I need uh, just uh, pulling out some dyes and just want to do some, some fun dyes with backgrounds already done, then I have some stuff to choose from. I will use. I said this one was too dark, but you know, I 
think I do like it because it pulls in that, it pulls in this tone right here. So I think I am going to take some of this. And you can see I'm not being fussy on how I trim it. Like I said, you can certainly use your paper trimmer if you want uh, to do more delicate squares or shapes. But for me, I'm just being organic and just pulling off pieces. Because, as you will see from past journal journals that we did, journal pages, Sometimes you don't get to see much of what you're what you have left anyway. So I don't think anybody answered me as to whether they are new to this type of art or if you've done art journaling or mixed media before. That would be nice to know. There. I think that's a good pile to start with. So what I use for my um, glue, if you want, it's called Matte Medium. You can get all kinds of different markets for it. I look for things that are matte and not glossy. And it's kind of a glue. It dries clear and uh, it's very easily spread. You've done some, Irene. What's been your experience? Do you like it? Hi, Carolyn. Corey, I've done mixed media and a bit of art journaling. Awesome. So it's one of those things that you have to be forgiving to, to yourself because it always starts off, or the middle part, it looks pretty messy. So you want to make sure that you're, uh, you love it. Awesome, Irene. You have to make sure that you're not too hard on yourself. Because if you're, very, if you're a critic and you're quick to judge as to how something's turning out, then you're going to have a hard time with this kind of art because you really have to, sometimes I have to step away. I have to just put it away, put it down, go about my other business, and then come back to it. And I tend to go right over the top with this uh, glue. It just helps other products that you're laying down so that it doesn't soak in the paper. So this paper will stay true to this color. If I didn't uh, put anything over it, just kind of seal it, then it would take on all the other mediums and then I'd lose this color. I've done mixed media and art journaling. It's really good to see others, other takes on it. I agree. I'd love to see some of the stuff you guys do. So, you know, there's really no rhyme and reason, but I usually stick to the same paper pattern or whatever I'm working with until I'm done with that. And then I move on to the next piece, and then it's kind of like a piecemeal at the end as to where I want things. There's another kind of gesso which I may bring out and it's called ultra thick gesso and that gesso you can actually use through stencils if you want a little dimension but not as much as modeling paste but it's also good that if you want to really white something out with little medium on your page it's good for that because it's quite thick. Uh, let's see what else do I have here. And I'll put these pieces down. So I might pull out some of that. It wasn't that long ago we did the um, February art journal because February was a very busy month so I didn't end up doing it 
until the very end of the month. And with uh, Ricky Palooza, I didn't want to let this one sit too long. So booked it in because we have all kinds of fun, fun activities coming up for you guys over at Unique. I can't wait for uh, the Lucy and Ricky show tonight, even though, truth be known, I already did my shopping. Oh my gosh, as soon as, as soon as I looked yesterday and seen some of the fabulous stuff they had in the store, it's almost like panic sets in, and uh, I have to buy it all at once. That's really why I'm still working. <laughs> I joke about retirement, but it uh, gives me the ability to continue to buy, and that's my excuse. I tell my husband while I'm buying it when I can, because once I retire, then uh, I won't have the ability to buy as much, and I'll have all kinds of stash to use. He just kind of rolls his eyes at me. He knows the difference. Um, let's see, that's the same as that one. This is the really, really dark stuff, maybe over here on the light. What's some of your favorite products coming into the store? What are you seeing that you're really excited about and like? I know I have favorite stuff. Like I said, I'm pretty excited about the All and Create line. It's been a favorite of mine for some time. And I have a few sets um, that I purchased long before I was part of the, the Unique team. And uh, so I've been dying to use them. And now that Unique's carrying them, then I feel okay with using them for classes and things. You guys have any favorite products? I said I wasn't ordering any more 49th the Mark and I bought the whole Kaleidoscope line. I hear you, Corey. I bought the, um, the Kaleidoscope is beautiful, but I bought the charcoal and uh, I think I'm going to enjoy that quite a bit. go this way because I don't want to cover up all that dark and I always put a piece of copy paper in between so that whatever I'm doing on the current journal page doesn't leak or doesn't damage the next page this one he oh look look what I did I put it on the wrong page I was just gonna say it, it's okay if it damages the one on this side, but I don't want it to damage the one that we already did on the other side. And it's really not damaged, it's just a little bit more worn. But I have to be careful because I'm putting this matte gel, I a leak over too much, they're going to stick together. You've been on the Elizabeth Craft Design kick lately, Ruby. What do you like about her stuff? What is it that draws you there? Because that's good. That's good for Heather to know, right? It's good for her because there's so much. There's so much to choose from to bring into the store. And it's like, well, what do people really like? So it's nice to know. Elizabeth Craft kind of reminds me a little bit of kind of Tim Holtz. Um, in her design and it's and I like it too I do like it there's nothing I really don't like okay we're getting there just a little bit of this this color I think hmm I don't want much 
more because I want to leave some space today to do some uh, what journal am I working in it is one of dilutions it is an 8 by 8 I think it's just the craft with the elastic any journal would do that's just was happened to be the one that I had empty when I decided to start doing the months for 2024 so I wanted to start with a new journal but any kind of journal it doesn't have to be um, this size you could really adapt it to any size there okay I'm going to give that a minute to dry To me, for the journal, for journal art, this is the boring part. This is the part that I least enjoy, is putting down the paper. What I enjoy the most is all the fancy, I shouldn't say fancy, but all the, the touchy things that you do at the end to really make the components pop. That's my favorite part. So I'm just going to give this a dry. And if you haven't been here before, this is my craft tool of choice. It is the Ranger, it's called Heat It. And it's really like a hair dryer. It's not as hot as an embossing gun. Um, so it doesn't make your stuff bubble like an embossing gun does if you're using that high of a heat on paper. So I do like this if I'm just wanting something to dry. Now, of course, I have couple embossing tools that if I'm actually doing embossing that's what I'll bring out but I do like this one for drawing drying and if I wasn't doing this on camera I might just step away and let it air dry it does not take long at all um, these mediums are very quick to set but it doesn't hurt to put them on like this neither uh, not much I don't like about Elizabeth Craft, but there's so much instructions available to show you how to use the product in different ways. And that is important, isn't it? I agree. And I think that's what, uh, what draws me to Tim Holtz as well, because there's so many. They have such a great design team, and there's a Facebook site just for his products with all his designers. and. Everybody kind of shares what they do, but Elizabeth Crafts is like that, so I can appreciate that. Okay, now what do I want to do? Do I want wash? Maybe I'll wait for the washi tape. I think, I think. What should I do now? I think I'm going to take a little bit more gesso and just make things a little bit whiter. I collect Tim Holtz. I don't want to use it. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> Get it out and break it out and use it. So this is what uh, I said I had heavy gesso or I don't know what I called it. Maybe I called it heavy. And this is uh, Finnebar. And those of you that have been watching me, you know my, my go-to trick with any products that are semi-liquid is to put saran wrap in until it touches it and then I put a baby wipe inside when I put my lid on especially for large jars like this unless you're using it every day a jar like this is going to last a long time and I haven't had a problem with it so So if you do that with your jars, you'll be good. And this is quite thick, as you will see. I could use it as paste, but today, and I might use it as my paste. I have modeling paste out here, but it is quite thick. But it is just gesso. And you see when I put it down, how it really covers the background without many layers. And you can get to see me use this tool. So, like I said, it's a silicone brush. Cleans very nice just with water. And I just want to 
kind of blend in the edges to make it look like again that organic feel between the paper and the book. I am a collector I have to say there's lots of things that I buy and don't use because then the next fabulous thing comes out and I'm on to that again. I justify it by saying someday I won't have the disposable income that I have now because I'm getting up there and retirement's getting closer. So that's my justification anyway. But I have been known to sell off stuff that I haven't even opened. Shameful. Just shameful. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting down some of the thick gesso where the two pieces of pattern paper meet just to make it look like one's blending right into the other. Or at least that's my thought. I agree 100% on buying while you can, I know. But I do have a very tiny space that I dedicate to this craft. So I have to be very careful because a lot of times something new comes in and something has to leave. But if I'm being completely honest, I never think about that when I'm buying. I say to myself, oh, it's just a die. It's not going to take up that much space. Or it's just a stamp. Okay. I like where this is going. So I'm just going to... And the other thing is I do is when I'm not using my mediums, I put the saran wrap back on. Even though they only may be off for a short time, I put them back on. Now I have this baby wipe which is perfectly okay. It's dry though, so what I do is I just wet it. You're liking how it's looking? Good. So I'm just moistening this baby wipe that was there, and I'm just gonna put it right back in the top. I place my saran wrap, and it just keeps it moist enough that I will be able to continue to use this. And I had this big jar Oh, for at least two years, maybe three years. And any time I, when I didn't used to do this, my products would dry up really fast. Now, these products are not meant to last you forever. So you have to know that. When you're buying them, then you should use them because they aren't going to last forever. And uh, those large jars... I wouldn't buy a large one again. The Finnabar tube that Unique gets in this size is awesome. Like this is heavy gesso. Um, and this one come from Unique. It's not opened yet. But as soon as I start using it, and I like the squeeze tube because you're not going to get that issue with the air hitting it and drying it up as badly as the jars. But like I said, this isn't meant to last you forever. So once I open it, if I don't use it often enough, then you might run into an issue with it drying up. And this little brush, it cleans off just with a baby wipe. So it's fabulous. I love it. So let's dry this section. And I know I always put March, and I've been using my, uh, anything that I have for sticker alphabet, I've been using the liquid, or the matte medium, to stick them down. So I'll probably do the same this time. I didn't cut out a saying yet, because I'm not really sure, but I also pulled from my stash and you speak of 49 in market 
I pulled out some rub-ons. That was one of the lines that are green and brown, so we'll be putting some of those on. That's pretty dry. So I'm going to, I think I'll use the regular Distress. I do have the Oxide out as well, but uh, I think I'll start with the regular Distress. And we'll do some maybe tea dye. So for this, you just push it on your plastic. Now you talk about Distress ink. I've been a, fan, a Tim Holtz fan since he began with his original six colors of brown. And most of my pads are the original pads. And I use these often. And I have some reinkers. I don't have a lot of reinkers. I have some, but very few did I have to reink. So I don't know what's in his formula, but uh, I'm telling you, I'm getting my mileage out of those inks. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of water and we'll tap it down. So if we didn't put gesso on, this would just soak right into the paper, or not the gesso, but the um, matte medium. It would just soak right into the paper, and you wouldn't have a chance to get these splatters and things that we're creating. So this is tea dye. And you can also take a paintbrush if you want to, to do it that way. I probably should do that. That way I won't have to have ink splattered all over. And I'm going to put some of that color down here. So I will wipe my palette off. And I'm going to dry this. If you don't dry your colors in between, then again the colors will blend. And, it, and it's probably not going to look bad because all these colors go with each other. But you won't get these dried light and dark areas like we get now. I know there's a lot of companies coming out with some cool ink pads like um, I used to be big into Altenew. I used to have a lot of their stamps so for mini cubes I have like four tins of their inks for the mini ones and that's what I take when I go on weekends away instead of dragging the Tim Holtz ones because they take more space I just take those little containers and that's really convenient and that's what I generally keep them for I also like to use them when I need when I'm doing stamping or stenciling that you need like a dark light a dark medium and light color of the same ink palette then I like those um, pink fresh has some nice ones now so there's a lot of companies getting into it I think I'm going to do some peeled paint next I will take my brush this time just so I don't splatter I think Vicki Booten calls this the kissing, if anybody watches her videos. She's been busy traveling lately, that lady. And I'm just kind of lay, laying some color down, getting some depth, and every time you dry a layer, then it creates more depth. Not always do you have to pile things on top of each other to create depth. So I don't know if you can see it really good on camera, but like these, it looks like it's very dimensional when you dry, dry it in between this way.
I do like this color palette. I'm a very earthy toned person. If you were to ask me my favorite color, I would say brown. Love this technique. Hi, Erin. Yeah, the uh, kiss it. Kiss it. Kiss it like it's your grandma, she says. I like Vicky too. And this little heat tool is gentle enough that you can kind of leave it directly on a spot, like for a few seconds. So like if there's a splatter that you really like the shape of, grab your heat tool and dry it right away because that's going to kind of maintain its shape. So I do have some gathered tweaks that I think I'll do next, which is a darker brown. And then I have a forest moss. Maybe I'll do the forest moss first. summer is upon us. Spring is around the corner. How many of you still craft during the summer? Do you still keep it up? Or do you kind of, I know like I'll still do some crafting, but I'm a big uh, gardener. And I shouldn't say big gardener. It's not like vegetables. I do a little bit of vegetables, but a lot of flowers. So once I'm done planting, then it's not bad. But uh, for the first part of the spring, early summer. I'm quite busy with that. You do, Christine? Hi there, how are you? It's good to see you, or at least see you on here. I know you're signed up for Ricky. Yeah, well, for you, being a teacher, summer's kind of your available time, right? If I didn't have the flowers and garden uh, I'd probably be more inside, but I really enjoy that. Hi, Irene. Yes, you still craft? You're excited for Ricky? I am too. I'm just going to kind of hold my heat tool here to really dry those areas because I like that dark. And you can use your fingers. I craft in the summer usually outside on the patio with the dog. Oh, that's nice, Ruby. Um, one thing I did do last summer outside is I did a lot of stitching. So the stitch dies, I was part of the Spellbinder, and I see they're available again for, for pre-order. That's exciting. So, um, last summer I did the year before stitch dies for Christmas cards. This summer I'll do the ones that I got last year because by the time I got them most of my Christmas cards were done. So that's going to be fun. And that I can do out on the deck. It's not like a whole lot of stuff. It's not something that I have to worry about the sun getting at. If you have a covered porch then that's brilliant. I think I'm going to save the brown to do some um, maybe I'll do that now I think out loud guys so I'm just gonna this is pretty dark so here we go I'm gonna put some water and let it drip I am working on my craft mat. Sorry if you guys can't see that. And then you can always take your baby wipe or your um, paper towel to sop up anything that you don't want. And of course, we can always go back over with more gesso. So I do kind of like that. Let's dry that. And it will dry lighter. 
just hair to spray black. I don't know if any of you were here the first class that we did, the winter one, but I was almost to the end of the ink stage and I was like, do I do the black or don't I? And I did and it came out really good. The thing to remember is if there's two dark areas, I can go back over with some white gesso and lighten them back up. So don't ever be afraid to use it. Like, I shouldn't say don't be afraid. You're going to be afraid. Like, I was a little bit hesitant here. But I know I can go back over with uh, some gesso to lighten it up. And as it dries, it will get lighter. But I'm not done layering yet. So I do kind of like that. And the other thing you can do is spritz it again. This is reacted to water, right? So if you if it gets too dark, you spritz it, and then you can lift it. But I kind of like that little dark drip there. That's an excellent reminder. Yes, yeah, just, like don't be afraid, and especially that's why it's important to put this matte medium or a, like this kind of a glue that dries clear, um, because it kind of seals your work. So like the paper was sealed before I started the sprays. So that's why when I put water on it, or you can cover it with gesso, what's underneath it stays intact. Well, this is pretty close to, to black, Irene. This is a really dark. I want it up in that corner. And I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to show you. I'm just kind of tilting my book. I'm going to put some paper towel here on the end. I know it's going to come right off of my lap. And I do have to tip it out of camera here for a minute. And that's the other reason I put the paper in between, right? So that uh, I don't ruin the pages that we already did. So I'm just going to add some more water to spread this around. But I do like that brown. Mm, I think I'll use this one. Nice clean fingers. <laughs> they won't be after I'm done. let's dry this and I do work on a glass mat um, it's kind of a countertop that I have for a desk so I can clean this really easy and the stuff I have on my desk it does get splattered every now and again but that's okay it is water water friendly inks until they're completely completely dry but Distress inks, unless you seal them, they will always react with water. So even if I came back tomorrow and, and if I didn't put anything else on top, if I walked away from this right now and came back, there's opportunity to remove more of the brown. Jennifer yeah it's coming together sometimes I don't like it by this stage but I think it's the color palette that uh, these are my color tones I love them so I think now I'm going to do some stenciling uh, to use this one this is a Finnabar stencil and they're like good price point like 1320 and I'm sure I got these from unique I never went through 
their stencils lately to see what they have. This one is called, maybe it doesn't, Documented. That's what it's called. But they have a lot, like here's another one from Stamperia, which is part of the Prima. So they have a lot of, of uh, stencils with writing. I was very excited to see the Indigo Blue um, stamps that just came in at Unique that are like really excellent price point, like five bucks under six dollars and they're excellent for backgrounds. So I did pick up a few additional of those. These cards from the color box, they're coated too so you can wipe them clean, which is nice. Okay, so it goes this way. So already I know I'm gonna cover some of that dark area with this modeling paste. So even though it looks dark, it is going to lighten up some. Oh, pull up my, my little pad. I'm getting kind of down in my modeling pace, which is good. I love, love throwing away empty jars. I do not like throwing away jars that are still half full and dried. Doing these journals every month is really getting me to use the product, which I really... In, I'm enjoying. I hope you guys are too. Nice. I'll do some over here. Maybe I'll move it up a little bit. Now I did not take in a jar or a pan of water with me today. I kind of forgot a few things didn't I so this uh, modeling paste will dry but modeling paste is one of those things if you soak it in some warm water it will come off oh thanks Christine it is coming together and if you're seeing anything that you like and you're part of Ricky remember you got that coupon now, I don't want to put this somewhere where it's going to get... Darren? Oh, he doesn't hear me. Where can I put this? Hmm. Well, I'm going to put it right here on my table. Being prepared is everything. And I think I'll throw a couple of baby wipes on top of it to keep it moist and that will help there start at your list awesome that looks so good I wasn't sure when you got that brown going <laughs> yes Corey I know it's always risky isn't it so I put my saran wrap on my model and paste and I'll wipe off my spatula. I do use a lot of baby wipes during this, and that's not so environmentally friendly, but uh, I get them just for this, this reason. And I will throw this baby wipe in here. Already shopped. Yep, yeah, me too, Corey. Me too. Okay, so we have to give this a minute to dry, or I can use my heat tool and dry it. Now the nice, one of the nice things with modeling paste as well is uh, it will take ink really well so if I had to put this down first and then spray it would really take it nicely but I like that the ink is in the background this again just adds another layer I do prefer to let my modeling paste dry by air because you do have the risk of it bubbling a little bit 
it doesn't really hurt it. It will sink back down after the heat goes off of it, but uh, it will bubble it if it gets too hot. Now, if this was an embossing gun, I would have had to stop by now. But it does dry pretty fast. But I want to do some um, rub-ons, so I want it fairly, fairly dry. Still shopping. <laughs> I know. It's a disease, isn't it? Okay, so where are my rub-ons? I don't think I'll be using those stamps. So I have all kinds of different rub-ons. I'm a lover of 49 and Market as well. So I have these ones that are called Vintage Essentials. So they're just different. Um, I just brought them out for the color tones. And they do have some words on to them. But I don't think it's going to stand out against this background. So I probably won't use those words. But we also have some nice leaves and some butterflies. I did pull this out. This is uh, from Color Swatch Toast. So it was the Color Swatch Charcoal that I bought this time. And the other one I bought was Toast because, as you know, I love the neutral colors. So we might be able to incorporate a little envelope on this page. And then we have Color Swatch Toast. Again, in all kinds of different ones. This package I never opened yet. And then I do have some, and I'm not sure which one this one was, but I do see some uh, mushrooms that I'm going to dig into. So, let's do some mushrooms first. Let's see what we have here. Oh, and these ones have, oh, these ones are nice. I think it's a couple of different packages that I put had together. And there's some words, so we can definitely find a spot. I like that. When you retire, you will still want to buy the new stuff warning. <laughs> oh, you're funny. Okay, Corey, catch you later. Yeah, I, I know. Like I said, it's a disease. So this is a saying, it's talking about gather together. I'm just going to take my bone folder and because I have some uh, different layers going on, you need something really, really good to get your rub-ons to, to stick down, like some a tool like a bone folder. And now we're getting to the, remember I said the, the finicky parts, like the part in the process where I kind of slow down and I step back and have a look at it and decide where I want things. We're kind of there now. So if anybody wants to drop off, you feel free and I'm just going to keep going. And that was one of the things last time that I said I kind of show you what my process was for shading in at the end um, because I know it looked so different from when I left you to when you seen the finished product so I kind of wanted to show you what I do when I do that there's just a bunch of words on this one um, this one's kind of a green with definitions. Discover. I like that one. Maybe I'll cut that one out. And I also seen ALL All and Create came out with some nice rub-ons. When I was in on the store last night, the pictures weren't loaded quite 
then so I didn't put any in my cart but I'm sure I'm going to go back and get some of those they look really nice so I'm just finding some flat surfaces some flat areas on the paper where there's no modeling paste to put down these words just because I want to get all the the words out the 49 market uh, rub-ons are so easy to use and they come off really nice okay so I was after the mushrooms so there's one and I do like that it's a little, little bit of a different color Oh look, I have all kinds of varnishing sticks in here. The Great Outdoors, I think that's what the line was. That green is too, um, too light, I think, for this color palette. Yeah, that was what this, these ones were from. I like that leaf. Not sure about that green. Well, that one there kind of goes with the mushrooms, so maybe I'll take that one. Oh, and there's some nice doilies on this one. This one's the from the kit. What did I say? Um, the brown. And this is actually like a rub on washi tape. But I'm going to use real washi tape today. But that's pretty cool. Okay. Let me get a few more things from this one. And one of the things I do when I start cutting apart uh, the rub-on sheets, like you don't want the release paper to come off. The color together looks fantastic. Thanks, Irene. It is coming together. I'm liking this. Um, so you don't want the backing to come off your sheet when you store it because then the rub-on... The rub ons are going to rub off inside your package. So, what I'll do is, like, uh, if it's getting close where I think things will move around, I'll just put a staple into my package. So, like here, of course, I have the tiny attacher. So, I'll just staple it because I'm that probably will come apart. And as I get down, I'll put a couple staples in so it doesn't come apart in the package and I lose my rub-ons because God forbid if I lose any little piece of my obsession. Okay, so let's start with these and see what I think. I'm thinking I'm going to need a couple of more leaves, but I'll, I think I'll take them from the other package because I like the color a little bit better. I want the leaf to kind of come out from there. That's what these lives are all about, right? It's about gaining some tips and tricks and um, sharing tips and tricks. So if you guys have anything to share about what we're talking about, rub-ons and mixed media, please do. I certainly don't proclaim, proclaim to be an expert. I just like to play. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And when you do these lives without ever doing it before to have an example, you're kind of putting yourself out there. But uh, it really doesn't matter to me. If it turns out, wonderful. If it's total disaster, it never will be a disaster because you can always cover it up. And I think that would be the biggest tip that I could share if there was a page that I really just did not like at all. Yeah, these rub-ons are nice. It doesn't take much energy. Now, the ones that are over the modeling paste, they're a little bit harder to get stick, but they will. You just persevere a little bit. Oh, my modeling paste was a little wet, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, I think I want another leaf to come out on this side. So I'm going to find that before I put down the mushrooms. And I'll use it from this one here. This is the Vintage Essentials. I 
and that's why I end up mixing packages, right? Because I'll take it from here, and I'm not going to put it back in here. I'll probably put it in one of the storage, the storage uh, envelopes that I got. mixed media but your style is gorgeous Sherry and so inspiring when you make it look so easy and forgiving that is such a nice thing to say Deborah I really appreciate that well I think the thing to remember like what really do you have to lose you don't have to show it to anybody it's just for yourself and I do watch a lot of tutorials I've been blessed with being able to take classes from some of the great artists out there and um, my style is pretty whatever whatever you feel like doing in the moment that's kind of my style it's uh, I am a layered person like if I had to say what kind of a style I have I have to challenge myself sometimes to leave white space because I do layer and I love the layers um, so if I'm looking for a challenge for myself sometimes that's what it will be is can I leave a white space and that's kind of what I was trying to do when I put the gesso down here um, and I might go back with a light the light gesso just to lighten it up a little bit because when you do that it does pop your other elements so I might do that but that is a challenge for me see I had a little staple on these mushrooms Put these down here and it's a great way to use like mixed media is an awesome way to uh, use your products in a different way like for those of you that are card makers or scrapbookers like for the majority of your art you probably bought your rub-ons for that purpose but take them out and use them for other things like put your rub-ons on the outside of your envelopes before you mail them that would make a gorgeous envelope And I also like using, like if I open a new collection pack and I'm doing a card class just with that uh, collection pack, I tend to go crazy and make an obscene amount of cards because I just want to use it all. And that brings me joy too when I can throw away empty packages. So you'll see like a lot of the times I make my own envelopes so I can use up the elements of the packages. love how the rub-ons have completely changed your piece beautiful yeah they do they kind of make things pop and I will go in with I think a little bit of white gesso um, in a few minutes and put it down through here so that this part will even pop more and we're not even done because we're gonna then outline things so stay tuned like I said this is the we're at the part of the project that I really enjoy now I'm, I, you know, me and my groups of three, I don't think I have any more mushrooms. But that's okay if we don't. Hi, Hilda. your videos it inspires me to use my stuff well that is what it's all about so I would say I am doing what I set out to do so I love that mm, maybe I'll put it right in the middle 
I haven't been a great sleeper lately, so when I'm awake at 3 o'clock in the morning, I know you shouldn't pull out your phone. They say that's one of the worst things you can do, but it actually really relaxes me. And uh, Pinterest is my friend, and I look at all kinds of neat ideas, and and that's kind of what I think about when I'm doing this with you folks. It's the kind of stuff that I've seen. And then a few butterflies, and then I think that will be it for the rub-ons. I think before I put the butterflies down, I'm going to go to my gesso. And I'll use a paintbrush for this because I want to be a little bit uh, specific where I put my gesso. And this is just regular gesso, so it's not the ultra thick because I don't want to white it out completely. So you can see how runny it is. I'm just going to kind of go around. Now the thing with gesso distress, it will activate your ink. I'm going to use like the kind of tap and move approach. Now I did have the picket fence um, stain out here. I don't know if that would have done better. You know what? I think I'm going to dry this and I might go th to the thick gesso. Just because where it's reacting with the ink. And this is one of those, let's do it and see what happens stages, right? So I'm going to dry it. So I want it whiter than that. put my march down somewhere so it's going to have to go up somewhere. Okay, where is the heavy gesso? And I'm just going to use my finger to see if I like that look more. I don't quite like the brush stroke. And you could take um, Distress blending brush here too. Okay, I like I'm liking this more. Yeah, and I do like the finger because I'm, I'm dabbing it, and the a blending one of the round blending brushes would kind of do the same idea as this if you didn't like getting your fingers dirty. But I like how it's looking. And Christine, I know you're a huge scrapbooker, so you could absolutely 100% do this as a background for a scrapbook page. Because you remember you'll be working with like 12 by 12 sheets. So you'd have lots of area to cover that if you wanted to do like something like this up in one corner and then something like this down in the other corner of your double spread layout and then have your pictures kind of focused in the center you could 100 percent do this i think you guys can see how 
the difference in the whiteness, the brightness. Yeah, so the thick gesso, so that you don't stir up the inks in a tapping motion, kind of works better than the brush, because that just kind of makes everything wet. And it moves the ink around. I'm just creating some what I like to call highlights so like areas of brightness because there are a lot like that brown was really dark so now I want to kind of lighten it up a little bit so I'm just going to go around to different parts and touch it up or lighten it up almost giving it a stickle look. You know how we used to do the ceilings back in the 70s? I know that's what my parents had that on their ceiling at one point. I think everybody did. Stuckle. Not stickle, but stuckle. Is that correct? And I lift it up from my, like the page that's sitting on every now and again, just so that I make sure it's not sticking to it. Um, more up here. Now, what's your thoughts? Do you like how the white is highlighting, or did you prefer it before I did this? And you're not going to hurt my feelings, like, you know, I like this, but I'm interested to hearing what you guys prefer. Because we all have different tastes. Love the white? Good. Well, you know what, and I get to try it for you, so if you're nervous about Oh, should I do this? Well, now you can say, well, I know what it's going to do. If I use a paintbrush and just regular gesso, it's going to blend the ink. So I better use my finger or a blending tool and kind of dab it. But if you have the heavy gesso on hand, well, that's even better. You can still see a few of my words. Remember when I started, I said, you know, you do your journaling and you could really see the writing. I can only see it in little bits and pieces, but I know what's under there. And I was able to write it all down and just kind of put it out there. And sometimes when you write down your feelings, then you're addressing them. Oh, you like it, Ruby? Thank you. Like I said, don't uh, don't worry about hurting my feelings. If if you're like, well, I kind of liked it better the other way, or well, it's really not my style, because we all have different styles. Okay, I think I'm just going to do a little bit more over here. It's not about the corners. I like lightening up. And we're not done yet. Like we still have our outlining to do. You like the dark, Jennifer? Yep. Well, I'm not done. So like, you know, I'm lighting it up now, but at the end, I know, I already know I want to do uh, some splatters um, towards the end to have them highlight. And I already know they're gonna be dark. So this might end up being a little bit dark. This one is, I believe it's an 8x8, 
it's one of the delusions and I know um, Heather can get them in now now it just so isn't you got it it kind of cakes up on your fingers just as a warning I'm going to dip them in the water here I am going to take my heat tool and kind of give it a little dry just in case. I think it's pretty dry, but I got a couple of butterfly rub ons I want to do. And then we'll get into um, what I call the, the real outlining. Fly here. You liking it, Erin? That's good. And that one's a little bit, see, I'll put it over here on the white. And that was the other reason, my other thought for the white was that these rub-ons, they're pretty close to the color palette, so if you don't have something light behind them, you're not going to see them. A little dragonfly. And I am going to grab one more butterfly to make three of that, and then that will be it for the rub-ons. this one. A little staple for my two-piece one that I got left. If you don't have the tiny attacher or a tiny stapler, I do recommend them. I do use them quite a bit. So we got a dragonfly, a butterfly, and maybe we'll put one more butterfly. We'll be right here. Love this so organic. Yes. And that's kind of the look I was going for when I was looking at the colors, color palette today. And I thought, because I usually kind of have a theme in mind when I sit down what I want to accomplish. And I was looking in the backyard. And we have a lot of birch trees and like a um, mossy hill. And I'm thinking, yeah, definitely speaks to me for an early spring layout. So that's all I'm going to do for rub ons right now. You never know, might change our mind in a bit. But I do want some of the sparkle, this mica. And this is pretty dark, so I'm not going to spray directly. But I am going to do some flicking. So, but I gotta shake them up really good. And these are the mica spray stains, the ones that um, Tim Holtz released. I think they were in sets of three or individually, I can't remember now. But they're really nice. And you don't really see the shimmer until it's completely dry, but it's really, really nice. So this is the green. And I want to put this where there's the dark green. And 
and I'm going to add a little bit of water and then dry it. So, um, stay tuned. So here comes the water. This is highly pigmented spray. So remember when I said, yes, I lightened it up, but it, it could get a little darker. This is what I mean. I'm just going to drag it, and if you tip your book, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, and keep spraying. It will kind of go down, make its way down. And you just have to trust it and let it do its thing. And then you can sop it up, soak it up. Right here, I didn't get much water. And then all that texture paste that you put down, it's going to really help form where we'll do our highlighting. And I'm sorry, I have to tip this all the way up just to let it do its thing and drip. And get my heat tool. And if it's too dark, you can pick it up before you dry it. But once this is dry, the shimmer is fantastic. And I don't know if you'll get to see it on camera. You'll just have to trust me. Because the first time I used it, I thought, well, that's kind of... Uh, anti-climatic because it, it didn't look like there was any shimmer but then after it dried holy moly the shimmer was beautiful so that color was specimen so it's like kind of a really dark mossy green There, I'm learning something new, where the spray goes on top of the uh, the uh, rub-ons. It doesn't soak into the rub-ons. It just kind of pulls on top. And I know it's like going dark to light, dark to light, but it's all those different layers that's just adding to it. Now this one is called Fallen Acorn, it's a brown, so I'm going to put it where the brown brown was. And it's kind of going to be the kind of the same thing, because it's quite dark. Here comes some water. I'll see if I can hold it up here for you to see this time. Where did my paper towel go? I wish you could see my space when I'm doing this. It looks so clean and tidy at the beginning. At the end, not so much. So let me see if I can get the camera to show you as it kind of just follows and what it's doing it's fall, falling around the curves of the paper that we laid down so it's kind of giving us a hint as to where the dimensions are for our outlining We'll dry this. I 
because if you remember the dark areas were underneath the modeling paste and the stenciling and now these strips are on top so it did change the color of the stencil it's not as white anymore but we're going to add some brightness to it by outlining and when i say brightness it could be some shading with black um, or green i'm thinking white And sometimes I do a combination. I'll do dark and then white. Keeping, so I've been here an hour and a half so far. That's not too bad. Sometimes it can go longer just to get to this stage. It really depends on what I'm liking as it's going down. So there's a couple of different things that I use for um, outlining. I am getting the hang of using the Tim Holtz pencils, which I really like. So these ones. And what I like about the, they're heavily pigmented. So you don't have to use a lot. When you go directly from pen to paper, um, you can wet them. You can smudge them with your finger. And you can see a little bit of the outline. Or my favorite way to use them is, or my favorite way so far, has been to take a paintbrush and pick it up from the pencil and then lay it down. So I think I'm going to go in with the white and see how we do. I might try dipping it into the water. And I'll go down here in the end. You don't want it too wet though. And I know he uh, he come out with a two pack, the black and the white, and it's for these reasons. I gotta find my glasses because this is close up work. It's for these reasons that he did the black and the white together in a separate package, for the reasons of people use them a lot for highlighting. But I haven't used the white yet, and I don't know how well it's gonna be to show up. I'm gonna grab. A smaller paintbrush. And this is one of the ones with the water. You dip yours all the time. Now, like this, this page is our, this was our um, February page, and this is all the pencil crayon like all the black and um, some of the black in here the other thing I've been doing is putting a little piece of parchment paper in between because these are mediums and if you have a little bit of humidity in your house um, then your pages can get a little sticky so I do that did you use a pencil sharpener yet not yet but you can, yes, when they get dull, you because this is all this isn't paper, this is all pencil. This is whatever this name is, whatever this is, it's stuck right on. So you can use a pencil sharpener to uh, get them pointier. You can do splats. So if you got a really really wet brush, you can do splatters. I do like them. And these are going to last you a long time. I don't know if this is going to bring it as white as I want it. So I'm going to show you another product that I have. Uh, they're called Derwent Pencils. Now they are a pricey product. 
and then you keep the shavings and use as watercolor that's right so if you have any of these little palettes i think you can get them at the dollar store when you're when you have your pencil shavings you just drop them into one of these little wells and then this becomes like a watercolor palette so there's nothing wasted so that that's great thanks jennifer Yeah, I don't think it's going to get me as white as I, I'm looking. So I'm going to check the Derwent pencil. Because I want to lay some white down before I move on to my colors. So Derwent, they're called Ink Inktense Pencils. And I'm sure Heather can get them for you. Um, this was a set of 36. Bought it years and years ago. Again, heavily pigmented, but these are actually coloring pencils, but they have heavy pigment into them. So I'm going to try the white, and this is great if you have like fine bits. And I really may not have the ability to get it too white because of the dark color that's down. Yeah, no, I don't think anything's going to work to really lighten up. Oh, well, a little bit. But the pencil would have done the same. Yeah, that's not going to work. So, my next thought is to go with, because um, the white isn't going to work. I would have to go back to Gesso to get it right white. But I think I'm going to do it in brown around this edge. I'm going to dip this one. And you just dab it on a piece of paper towel. You can do it dry too and then wet. color is this? This is vintage photo. I'm not liking that color. So I'm going to go to my old favorite black. This is why I say this part is kind of the most finicky. Now I I'm liking the black. Because if you're going to take the time to outline, you kind of want to see what you're doing. Another way to outline I want to show you different options. I'll use the Derwent pencil, but you can do it with like a regular uh, pencil pencil too. Like, a, well, this is actually called an outliner, so it's just like a, a lead pencil. So when you're doing work like this, if you just hold your pencil loosely, the pencil tip will kind of find the, the ridges. And it will show you where the ridges are. What white gesso on a paintbrush maybe, yes, that might work. But I just want to find my ridges. And this is kind of what I do to highlight things. So if you just kind of go loosely, your pencil will kind of find the ridges of the paper. And then you can just follow those down. So I'm going to go back to my crayon, my black crayon. I try jelly jelly roll. Yes, I do have a jelly roll. Okay, I'm going to put some of this um, black down, and then I'll get the jelly roll pencil pen and see if that works. Great ideas, guys. Should have read. <laughs> Picasso? You mean the artist? Yep, 
Yeah, so outlines can be light or they can be dark, but it kind of just draws your eye into the lines of the project. And I do love outlining. And I don't know if you guys can see see the glitter from the spray, from the mica spray. I'm going to hold it up, see if you can... But there's definite glitter on this page. You can kind of see it shimmer there. And this part, honestly, this is this can take me a couple of hours, so I'm not going to bore you guys on camera doing it. Um, I'll take that off camera, but I kind of just wanted to show what I did. And I'm going to pull out the, the Jelly Roll pencil. I have a couple of the... Um, oh, I forgot this too. I have the Distress Crayon. And white. Maybe we'll try it all. Let me see if this works any better. This actually isn't too bad. crayon's not bad and I don't know if you can see it on camera but I can certainly see the difference myself but to finish this up I'm just going to do a bunch of outlining yeah the crayon's pretty good I forgot I had them let's see what the gel jelly roll does and I'm going to put March on here somewhere. I don't know where now, but I'm going to put March. And I'm going to find a little saying for the month. And I'll put that down. I have the worst time with Jelly Roll pens. They, like, they say rub it on your hand. And it will start going. But whenever I have lots of product down, they don't seem to work too well for me. Now that's where I just put the crayon. So maybe the waxy. Yeah, the work, it's rubbing on a little bit better over here. But I can't really see the white of the jelly roll neither. I'll just keep playing with it. Love the depth of colors. Thanks, Bev. And uh, when I'm all done, of course, I'll post a final, final page. And uh, I hope you guys gathered inspiration. I love the conversation. And let me know what you like and how you use things. It's uh, very helpful. And uh, I can't wait to do our next gel press class to cover months April, May, and June. So we'll do that. And I will be on Lucy and Ricky show tonight watching with you guys. Thanks for all the thumbs up and the hearts. I love it. Talk to you later. Bye.